Hi, my name is Tina Marie, and I am the host of the Unbalanced Pedestal Podcast. And on today's episode, we are going to continue the discussion on generational curses in the form of limiting beliefs. Mm, I know, I threw a curveball on that one, right? You're probably wondering, what does that even mean? you know, within your family dynamics, limiting beliefs. So if you listen to my, the previous episodes of me just talking about limiting beliefs stemming from where they come from, they come from your parental figures. They come from other people, other family members, other immediate family members, that are around you from the time you were a toddler all the way through your adolescence and even into your adulthood. And these limiting beliefs are in general, when we talk about limiting beliefs, it's in everything. It's how you show your confidence. It's how you handle your finances and what you feel and how you think about your finances. It's about your self-care. It's about how you show up for, for other people and your limiting beliefs as far as you, you know, how you show up for yourself and as well as how you communicate your needs, your desires, all of the things that you want for yourself. So all of these things are a form of, plus more, but they're a form of generational curses. So when we talk about limiting beliefs, when we're even, before we we are even even thought of, that, before we are even thought of, you know, before, you know, mom and dad got together and they had their own challenges they had to deal with from their own parents. Their own parents telling them they are not good enough, that they would never amount to anything, that so-and-so, it's not, they're not good for you and they're ruining your life or you should go after this particular person because they will take care of you. Whatever it is that was told to your parental figures, to your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents, whoever that may be, it all stems down, going down into you. So even before you come out the womb, your life, it's already predetermined by your mother and your father. Um, or your legal guardian, you know, the, everyone has a different household dynamic growing up. So they already have this predisposition of what your life predetermined roadmap of what your life will look like. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. You are going to go down this path. You're going to like it and you're not going to complain. And if you say otherwise, you may get put in time out. You may get some kind of formal, you know, some form of corporal punishment. Uh, Back in the day, you know, spanking was a thing. Apparently it's not anymore. You know, I don't know what's going on, but (laughs) my family is from the Caribbean. So that's all I have to say about that. And so those of you who are listening are from the Caribbean, you know what I'm talking about. When your grandmother, she's like, go get that switch. <laughs> you look at her, look at her funny. Go get that switch. Go get the belt. <laughs> or a slipper close flying your way. I don't know. Whatever, whatever move she's feeling that day. But uh, <laughs> sorry, grandma. I'm sorry, sorry. So, (laughs) um, you know, it's just your life, it's predetermined from the time 
you exit, you know, the womb. And not only that, think about this, whatever anxieties and stress the mother is carrying, all those beliefs, all of those conversations that are happening from the time you're, uh, I don't know what week it is, but when you're, when the, the fetus's ears develop, they begin to listen in, they can hear all these conversations. You know, the, the womb, it's literally like a thin wall, you know, that the baby, the fetus can hear everything. They can internalize everything. So by them hearing arguments and conversations, they are already equipped with the external world's limiting beliefs, believe it or not. If you think about this as well, why some parents opt to make sure that the, the, be the belly, the womb, it's covered with classical music you know so it's it produces so much more within the child as they grow within the mother and you know the mental everything is a whole different di dynamics and I can definitely say from my own experiences with my own children and just you know going back to what I just said about classical music so I see, you know, the differences in both my children, how they grew up. One has more anxiety than the other. And it's, again, the surroundings of what the baby is taking in, the fetus is taking in before they even step out into the world. And once they do that, then there's more societal norms and family norms that are also indoctrinated into the child. The child may not be even able to, to speak or even to process what is going on at that moment, but it's literally the brain. When we talk about how the brain has 70,000 thoughts a day, so you can imagine what the study will look like if someone hasn't done it already, um, you know, and, and the world we're living in today, you know, <laughs> uh, with science and the way things are going, it'll be amazing to find out what, uh, what beliefs a fetus, a newborn has from the time they're, they're born. Like, what are the thoughts they're thinking? And so, and I'm not going too deep into this, but this is like the things that just, the thoughts that, just like runs through my, that runs through my mind when I just think about these, you know, these little, these little things of how we come to be and how we have these perceptions of ourselves. So you're, you know, one years old, you're, or less, uh, you know, from zero to one, you are learning to walk. And what is the first thing to believe that is told? Be careful, you're going to fall. Uh, all of these things that you are put, you are giving blockers at a very young age. Don't do that, you hurt yourself. Don't touch that or you know, again, these, I can't, I'm not able to statements, don't do this, you'll get hurt, these negative thoughts, or speeches, or words that it's said to a young child. You get older, you go to grade school, you know, the teacher tells you something, and that sticks in your brain. Oh, and this is back in the day, I don't know what they do now. Um, in most uh, public education or private, but back when I was growing up, when a teacher, when my, my third grade teacher, Miss Mentos, so if you're watching this, Miss Mentos, yes, this is about you. <laughs> I haven't forgotten. 
and the stigma is broken. But third grade math teacher, she was, I believe, she was definitely from uh, the Caribbean. I don't remember what island she's from. And for her, and this was, oh gosh, third grade was somewhere in the 80s. I don't know. I was like late 90s. I don't remember. Um, I would say definitely early 90s, third grade for me. So back then, and this is a public school, back then, if you got called to the, the, the board and you write your answer for a math problem, and if you got it wrong, she'll actually ask you to put out your hand and she'll stuff your hand with a ruler. And so that right there, my friends, is a limiting belief in the form of physical abuse. Yes, yeah, so back then, and even, and um, I had a friend, she was going to Catholic school and they had the paddle when they, the girls or the boys, well, she, I believe she went to all girls school, but again, they had the paddle. So this is what they did. They, corporal punishment <laughs> um, in a form of acceptable abuse by the teacher. And that limiting belief right there made me think that I was not good in math at all. So I literally sucked at math. I never tried hard enough to accept math. I just said, I'm just not good at it. I'm not good at it. It's not until I had this experience when I went into ninth grade and ninth grade, I forgot whatever they taught at that time. Uh, maybe I think it's algebra one. I took it in ninth grade, I failed. So I had to repeat that again. So her name was Miss Firebong, so, something like that. Uh, and she, I felt her class. We took it again. Don't remember how I made that class up, um, but that other teacher who that was. <clears throat> I had her again in 11th grade. I felt her class again, <laughs> twice. The same teacher, I felt her class twice, ninth grade and 11th grade. I remember going to summer school to make up the class guess what happened? I understood everything. I understood everything with this other teacher. Passive, no problem. And then I, at that point, I realized it's not me. It's just the way that the lesson was taught. It was a great example of saying that I am good at math. It's just when someone teaches it a certain way, I may not grasp the concept. But if, it, if it's taught to me in a different way, then I get it. And that's what the limiting belief was. The limiting belief was that I just suck at math, period. There's no hope. But meanwhile, that person who is teaching that lesson was just not explaining to me where I could understand. Simple, right? Simple as learning your ABCs. Not everyone learned ABCs the same way some people need to add extra to it <laughs> add extra to the song and again if going back to like my third grade teacher if I had a different teacher then I would have have gotten you know doing subtraction and multiplication and all these other things that I just was less like I don't understand what you're saying right now you're speaking another language literally but um, to, all, to say all that, those limiting beliefs that society itself, we're not even talking about what the family, but what society has placed on us, again, from the time you're not good enough, you never amount to anything. Why can't you be like your friend who has, you know, who is in honors classes and who's on the track team? 
all of these pressures that everyone is telling you that you can and you cannot do because this is what they were told. This is what they have signed up for to keep you in this bubble. And it may or may not be conscious, but a lot of people are just on autopilot. There are on autopilot. They are just saying stuff and doing stuff, not thinking about what the consequences are. And people like that really need to, my hope is for them to, to realize the damage that they're doing to the youth, to the adolescents in our society. Because once you place that belief uh, upon someone that's you know a very impressionable mind, they will sink, it will sink into them. They will internalize it and believe that they are not good enough in the world, that they can never be number one, that they should not even try, just, just give up before they even start. How about that? Like how many people you know that just give up and don't try before they start adults even adults that just don't say you know what I'm not gonna just waste my time and so you know other people beliefs it's honestly it's their dreams that they want to see you live out and, you know, I'm pivoting in this conversation. It's people who honestly think that because they did not make it, they want you to fulfill their dreams and to, you know, ignore whatever it is that you have for yourself. Don't even think about reaching for the stars. You know, you're going to sit here and go this route the way I planned for you. That you will, again, not amount to anything if you go this way. Because they'll, those parental figures, the, the teachers in your life, even the friends in that time will honestly tell you that you cannot do it. And they will say it in their own subtle little way. Some may say it point on, direct, but think about how many people in your past has told you that you cannot do something because one, they are envious, they're jealous, they see your potential, they see how brilliant you are they see your light they see how people gravitate towards you they see how you are helpful and you are kind and you're caring and a lot of these qualities a lot of people don't have and so they want to put you down and even adults other adults I've seen and it's very sad <laughs> it is so sad, but it is other adults put other adults down and it's just like, we're an eternal, I always, always, uh, write, especially, uh, in my, my book, how to live balancedly. I have in there where life is literally like a school. Uh, and this is like a reference I, I, I came up with six years ago that where I was working, it was just like a high school. You have the principal, which is the owner of the company. Then you have the assistant principal, uh, which is, you know, the, the salespeople, they were like the seniors. Then you have the, the teachers and then you have the students and it's just like clicks it's that's all life is about and it's amazing that you know that's how I see it 
and for me it's just like all right it's, life is literally an eternal it's an eternal school you're always learning you're always going to have adversity you're always going to have bullies <clears throat> you're going to have the people who you know rock with you and other people who just like can you do my homework for me <laughs> <laughs> you know, I didn't get a chance to do my homework. Can you, you know, it's always, you know, in that form. So I always ap apply that to every area of my life when it comes to that. Um, but it's just, you know, life is just so fascinating. And again, going back to what people see for you, because you have that potential, you have, you're striving to get out from the situation that you're, <clears throat> excuse me, that you're dealing with. And because you are that person to make it happen, they will place those fears on you and they will tell you what you need to hear in order for you to hold back from your potential, to hold back from your greatness. And because they want you to live the life that they may have dreamt for themselves. And these could be your parental figures where they have maybe sought to, you know, okay, back in the day in the, the 80s, 90s, even probably before that, where the biggest jobs were you become a doctor, a lawyer, you know, uh, or the president. That was like <laughs> the three, uh, the three top <laughs> jobs to go for back then. You know, now it's like not when we're <laughs> no one no one wants to be the president these days. It's just too much work. We ain't, we ain't doing all that. <laughs> but you know, just you are there to live out their dreams. You are there to see what they couldn't do uh and you have to listen to them there was this one woman i spoke to i had to get some water <clears throat> but there's one woman i spoke to earlier this year she reached out to me frantic and uh she was uh in india and she was just like i need your help how do I, you know, how do I study for my test? And I'm just like going through with her, I'm just DM, DMing each other back and forth. And I'm like, okay, so when is your test? And she's like, it's in a few hours. I'm like, <laughs> so for her, I'm like, first of all, I can't help you with that. Let's, let's just be clear. <laughs> I cannot help you study. And she's studying to be a physician. And she was so distraught. And the only reason why she was freaking out is because her family expected her to become a doctor. You know, they're paying her for her to go through school. And she basically does not have a choice at all. And, you know, because she, she is literally stuck in her parents' dream of becoming a doctor. And so for her, she's literally has no way out. And how many of us feel that we don't have a way out, that we are limited to what we have to do for ourselves and how we have to do what well, things we have to do for our families and thankfully in the western culture we have options um majority of the time of uh, to you know choose our own career to choose our path in life but i can't imagine continuing to live in a state of just not being able to choose of what I want in life. Granted, for my different uh, jobs I held in the past, 
I want to say careers, jobs, because I, whatever I wanted to do, I went after. So if I wanted to get a, a degree or a certificate in something, and that's, that's where the wind was blowing me and I gone, I did it. I got a job in that field and did it for a while. And it's like, okay, next. And I moved to a different path. So, because I knew that I was able to do it and I just listened to what I needed to do um, at that time, I wasn't held back. But can you imagine, you know, my, my parental figure is saying that, why are you going this way? Why are you taking this job? Why are you going back to school? And you don't need to do that. And why, why, why? These are, again, limiting beliefs that are a place because they never strived to better themselves. They never strive to see what they are capable of. They never strive to see how successful they can become. Why? Because they have not had a blueprint they have not have someone in their own family growing up show them this is how it's done so now you come along with all you know these thoughts and you know you want to make you know eight figures and you want to have multiple businesses and travel the world they're like who are you that's not going to happen for you. Like, seriously, get the F out of here <laughs> is what they're thinking, right? They're like, who are you? If I couldn't do it, if your auntie or uncle couldn't do it, what makes you think that you can do it? Again, limiting your, your beliefs, limiting your passions, limiting your potential. These are, going back to what we're talking about, generational curses that need to be stopped. It needs to be stopped. We need to cut the cord on generational curses. This probably looks weird. I don't know what I'm doing. Don't block me, YouTube. <laughs> but generational curses need to be stopped in these limiting beliefs. Limiting your potential, limiting your greatness, limiting your success in financial abundance, your, your time freedom, your your will to just travel the world every single thing it can be done it can be done but it has to start with you you have to be the one to put your foot down and say no i'm not going to internalize what you feel about the world how you see the world you had your time you had your time what you did with your time that is not my problem this is my time. I'm going to do what I need to do. And I'm going to achieve what I'm going to achieve. You can sit over there, sit yourself down and let me do what I need to do. Obviously, you know, depending on how sassy you are, you may say it just like that. Or, you know, you can just like ignore them and keep on moving because we ain't got time for that. Okay. So going back to topic at hand, I'm going to reel it back in. It was getting too passionate. I keep hitting my mic. Getting too passionate, but limiting beliefs in the form of generational curses need to be stopped with you. I am stopping it with me, with in my own self. I am stopping it with my children. I am stopping it with my nieces and nephews. And I am stopping it with my parental figures, my madre. And, you know, I was just having these conversations with her at a later date, later time in my life as an adult. It's something that I would never have had with her, uh, opposed to the conversations I'm having with my own children at a much younger age. So I'm making sure that they are getting the same information that I get, what I learn, 
in my environment that they know that they have choices. You know, they are both are scholars. They are, you know, they have honor rolls and the dean's list all of these things because I pushed them from when they were young. They were always in school. My son will tell you, he was always in school. He was always in Saturday school. He was always in some program, um, whether it was free, paid, whatever it was, I found those resources and I made it happen. And so because of that, he is doing very well in school. The same thing for my daughter. I got her into a really good charter school, got her, she's, um, you know, now in a private school, all of these things that they have that potential. So why am, who am I? Who am I? All I did was carry them for nine months. I fed them, made sure, you know, they had a home, nice cozy home for nine months, but who am I? to limit their potential. The things that I thought, whatever it was back then, it's they surpassed that, like they surpass. I would never have thought they were, would be who they are today. I would ne never have thought that. But who am I to, again, stand in their way of their potential? I see what they're doing. They're in, you know, and technology, that's something that I want to do. And I'm so grateful that they picked it up for me, but they have the potential to do tremendous things that I can never even think of. The way they learn, the way they soak up information, only thing I can do at this point is just give them more, just keep feeding the brain, keep giving them knowledge, give them the resources that they need. and that is my job. That is my job. The way I'm feeding myself because no one's feeding me, I am also feeding them as well. So the limiting beliefs of what they can do and what they think for themselves, that is non-existent because every single day, every time that we speak, so what are we going to do? How are we going to solve this problem? How are we gonna get over this hurdle? What what can we do to make this happen today? Who do who do I need to call? What email do I need to send to make sure that the conversation is clearly clearly defined and that both parties on both sides need to uh the sorry both parties on both sides know what is the desired outcome? Because yes, I'm that parent. Trust me, I have a history. We're not gonna talk about that. No, my therapist said, let me stop. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm not that parent, but I am that parent when it comes to my child's education. I am I am up there. I think I, I will say in, oh, I can't remember I'm saying this. Yes, okay, so there is a history of, both, ch both children that the principal knows me very well, not in a bad way, but they know, again, they know how I show up for my children and I'm that parent that advocates. We, so what, what class can we get them into? Where can, what can we do to make this situation better? Um, because I'm always looking for, again, a better situation. What can we, what other resources are out there to, tap into this, this, this gifted children. And so that's why I say I'm that parent, you know, and I just have I always been. Don't ask me where I came from, but that's just the motherly instinct in me. Uh, I was never, I never received that. So, you know, it came from many sources. We we'll just leave it at that. But <clears throat> just to go back on, the limited beliefs and generational curses. We have the power to uplift one another. We have the power to uplift one another. And if you know a young adult in your life 
whether you are blood or not, and you see their potential, you see what they can be. And if you know for, even if you know for a fact that they don't have anyone to support them and support doesn't have to be monetary. Support can be an encouragement. Support can be acknowledging how hard they are working to achieve their own goals, to maybe even get out their own situation. Uh, it's a huge help just to have that acknowledgement that you are doing a phenomenal job and that keep doing great work. And this is not in the form of people pleasing, which is a whole different thing. This is acknowledging someone who is really, really have their eye on the prize. And this is what they feel so wholeheartedly in achieving and doing and it's their life's, life's purpose. Please reach out to them either by text message, a phone call, Zoom, FaceTime, WhatsApp, there's Telegram, there's so many options out there. There's no excuse for you to reach out to them or a simple phone call. I forgot about that. Like no, no one calls anyone anymore. <laughs> no one calls anyone anymore. <laughs> I don't think even bill collectors can call. I don't know. I don't get those phone calls. So I, I don't know what they do, but you know, it's definitely reach out to you know, that young individual that you know of in your life, because that will give them a positive, a very positive, you know, reinforcement that they need to hear that they just not getting at home, you know, or wherever they are in their life. And so, you know, that's your homework assignment, <laughs> your first homework assignment on a podcast. Who does that? I do because I'm weird as I've been told by my daughter and I'm like, okay, I am. I know I am. And the point is what? I embrace it. See, <laughs> but you know, just, I, you know, thank you again, you know, listening to me on this episode of generational curses and limiting beliefs. And if you enjoyed this episode, and the others, please subscribe, as well as uh, subscribe, not only that, but I will also bring on guests that will also talk about limiting beliefs and how they overcame them, and how, you know, they overcame them within their business as well. Um, other entrepreneurs who, again, they grew up with this mindset and how they broke free in order for them to achieve the success they have achieved in not just within their company, but also how that manifests into their clients, their employees. And if you know, again, someone who can benefit from listening to this episode, please send it to them, please forward it to them as I want to continue to spread the word into reaching as many people as I can with your help to stop these generational curses. And so we can leave a legacy behind for those who come after us to, you know, to empower them. And again, it all stops with me it all stops with you. It all stops with all of us. And again, my name is Tina Marie, and I am the host of the Unbalanced Pedestal podcast. Thank you. And I'll talk to you guys later.